All right, for this one, this is really a quick one. This is one you probably will not memorize, but I just want to point out a couple of the key things that are happening. So let's start this one. So when you're starting this image, see it's kind of got a frosted type look to it. It's not quite as crisp as it could be. So what we're going to do is we're going to be putting in a adjustment layer here. So we're going to come down to new adjustment layer and we're going to choose curves. Curves is a great adjustment layer. I'm going to go ahead and just click OK. Curves is a great adjustment layer here. Again, this is the histogram. Every single one of these little dots to build this up is showing you within this image, there's really nothing in the pure dark range because it's kind of got that kind of hazy type look. And there's really not a lot of pixels over in the light range. Again, this is not about white or black. When you're dealing with curves, it's like, okay, we've got a green, we've got a darker green, we've got a lighter green, and then we've got kind of a mid-tone green. So if I were to just start sliding these around, you can kind of see that is now taking everything that used to be in this kind of mid-tone, and it's now making it pure white. If I take this one over here, I can grab these pieces, and I move this around, it's now taking everything that used to be in this kind of mid-tone, darker area, and it's making it its purest, darkest version of that color. So when you're dealing with these curves, normally to get a nicely exposed image, you would just drag that over, maybe drag this over, and it's starting to look a bit better than it was before, but there still has that kind of hazy, somewhat washed out type look. So. I'm gonna bring these back here. If you move stuff around and it gets too messed up and it's just not doing what you want, just delete that layer. You can come back down here and you can choose curves. What we're gonna do with this is we're going to actually play around with some of these blending modes. There's this one blending mode called linear light. So when I click here and I go to linear light, you'll notice what it did is it got rid of a lot of that haziness, but man, those blues are too intense, like way too intense. And no matter how much I just drag around to adjust the entire dynamic range, which is the darks versus the lights in an image, it's not gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually customize this a little bit. So we're gonna click next and we're gonna change the opacity, or sorry, the fill on this. Fill and opacity are similar. We'll discuss why later on when we're doing some text effects uh, that you would use fill versus opacity. But for now, just go ahead and drag that over, click on next. And then it's at this point where some of the stuff starts to kind of get weird. So when you come up here to window, the properties panel is already open. It's showing me specifically the options for that one adjustment layer. This will change based on the adjustment layer that you're using. But since it's already showing, if I click properties again, it just reloads it. Now with photos, we're when we're in the RGB sp color space, that just means that it's using red, green, and blue lights. Red, green, and blue is used for monitors, for your phone. It's different than when we print, because when we print, we use cyan, yellow, magenta, and black on most color printers. So for here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to blue. So we're just gonna affect the blues in here. So you'll notice there's no real super dark blue. There's no real super light blue. They're kind of tucked in here towards the middle. So what we're gonna do is we're going to adjust this curve, this ramp that's right here. So I'm gonna hit next. And so it's telling you, you've got this input and you've got this output. Notice when I start to drag this, the input changes. When I start to drag this one, the out, the, the, actually that input is changing as well. So let's just do this. Let's go ahead and take this lower left one and we're gonna drag this one to about 40 or so. Yeah, close enough. If you wanna highlight in there, you totally can and just type in the number. And what that does is that got rid of the, the shadows that were in there. So again, the before, if this was, let me delete that. See how it's got kind of a bluish tint. I start bringing this this way and it's taking some of that bluish tint out of the shadows. If I go too far, it's gonna start going into the yellows, which is not what we really want. So we get that to about 40. I'm gonna click on next. And if I wanted to, I could kind of play around with this, but notice if I do this, it's actually adding blue to those lighter areas. So I'm gonna leave that where it's at. So when I turn this off and I put this back on, that's a much richer image 
You've got more dynamic range between the darks and the lights of all of the colors that are in there. And it really came out primarily because of this linear light. If I left that at normal, it's really not doing much at all, but that little blending mode, you can kind of see as you play around with these, there's different effects that end up happening. That's one of the things that makes this program tricky with, with photos is every single photo is different. Every single histogram of a photo is gonna be different. So there's no real memorization. It's a lot of experimenting and knowing that these things will help to darken areas. This will lighten things. This blends colors together differently. And so there's a lot of just experimenting as you go along. Now that you have that done, go ahead and save it. And let's move on to the next set of tutorials.